Hello, it's Sparky Pete in Liverpool in the isolation wing of the Peacock Sanatorium. And today I'm going to take you through RCD testing. If we look at this table of effective current on humans, on the uh, vertical axis we've got the time in seconds, and on the horizontal axis, the x-axis, we've got the current in milliamps. And you can see the different zones there, AC1, AC2, AC3, and then various degrees of AC4. If we look at uh, the key underneath, AC1, imperceptible, AC2, perceptible with no muscle reaction, AC3, muscle contraction with reversible effects. Once we move, however, beyond that, AC4, possible irreversible effects, and AC4, 1, 4, 2, and 4, 3, various degrees of risk of heart fibrillation, which is effectively a heart attack. Now, if we go back to the, the table again, you'll see that I've placed that cursor on um, 150 milliamps and 40 milliseconds. Now, it's no accident that when we come to talk about uh, RCD testing, I'll refer back to that later. Of course, I mean, something to realise is that it's not hard and fast, this, because it depends on the person um, and it depends on the situation in which they get the electric shock. I mean, it's it's some kind of way of uh, of working out the severity of the shock, but it's not an exact science. There's our shock protection family tree. When we fit our CDs, we're generally doing that for additional protection. Well, additional to what? Well, we're generally talking about um, additional to basic and fault protection. So basic protection is effectively what stops you poking your finger into the electrical insulation and getting a shock, barriers, insulation, enclosures, obstacles and placing out of reach now that could do with a little talk in itself. Fault protection, uh, what happens under fault conditions, earthing and bonding, fuses and circuit breakers, you know, in a nutshell. And that's part of a system uh, called automatic disconnection of supply. Now, additional protection. Well, we've got additional protection in the advent of the failure of either basic or fault protection or um, to protect us against careless by, carelessness by users. Now you can see there, uh, additional protection. Uh, use of RCDs to provide additional protection in the event of failure of basic protection. And on the other hand, use of RCDs to provide for fault protection or carelessness by users. And it also mentions supplementary bonding there as well. So when we fit RCDs, like I say, a lot of the time it's for additional protection. And uh, when we talk about additional protection, one of the tests that we do on the RCD is the additional protection test. This is the RCD in question, and you should be able to see there that the I delta N value, I triangle N, uh, the rating of the device is 30 milliamps. So when we talk about a 30 milliamp RCD, that's one there. But to make the test on the RCD, if you look at the on-site guide, it says as near as practicable to its point of installation. But I remember reading an article in Professional Electrician a couple of years back, and it said there's no real advantage in trying to do it at the nearest socket to the point of installation, and that we can just take it wherever's convenient. I mean, here I'm actually in the kitchen. So as I said with inspection and testing, we get conflicting advice from reputable sources. I've said that before. We're going to call it four tests and here I've got the instruments uh, set up for step one of the four. It's on 30 milliamps, it's on half times. I'm not going to use the um, the auto test function because I think it's clearer just to demonstrate them one at a time. So in this particular test it's going to put the, the 15 milliamps effectively on the circuit for two seconds and we're hoping and expecting that it won't trip. So let's give that a go. There we go, greater than two seconds effectively. And that's what we want. We don't want it to trip on half times. Well, now I've got the instrument set up for the one times test. So I'm still on 30 milliamps and one times. And you'll also notice I've got it set on zero. Uh, we do another test on 180 and, uh, and that way we're testing it around both sides of the cycle. But let, let's go with this test and we're expecting a value within 300 milliseconds. Thirty six point nine milliseconds. Those values that I'm referring to are in GN three. So you'll see there from that table for a six one double eight device, we're looking at three hundred 
milliseconds. And underneath is the, the five times value, the additional protection test, the 40 milliseconds, which we'll come to. So you can see I've got the instrument set up there for the five times test. I'm still on 30 milliamps, but I'm on five times now. And you also see as well that I'm going to do this test on the zero with the intention of repeating it on the, the 180. But just for now, I'm going to keep it simple. So what's in front of you is going to be simple. So here, we're expecting it to be within 40 milliseconds. Fifteen point nine, so we're well in with that one, aren't we? I mean, and what that was—that was the additional protection test, and that refers back to the graph that uh, that I came in with, came in with in the first place. For the one times and the five times test, where we're doing them both on zero and one eighty, we take the worst case scenario, so effectively the highest value that we get on this meter to cycle between the zero and one eighty. We just press this blue button, and that gives us our one eighty starting point. And the last test, of course, is to operate the button. There we go. It works. When we come to recording that information and the documentation, it gets a tick in the inspection schedule. And on the schedule of test results, we're going to record the value for the five times test and the fact that the RCD operated when we press the button. So I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. As always, um, constructive feedback, always appreciated because... Nobody knows everything and there's always more to say.